Hello and welcome to the studio. I'm Chris Kent and this is edition number five of my studio poetry diary. Um, thanks for all the kind comments uh, so far. And um, if you'd like to see some of the previous editions, I'll try and remember to post a, a link uh, when I post this video later. Um, so today I'm starting my studio day with a deeply touching poem by the British writer Vera Britton. It's called simply Perhaps... Uh, with the dedication to R.A.L., which I'll explain in a moment. Vera Britton, of course, is most famous for her, um, as the author of Testament of Youth, her defining memoir of the First World War, which recounts her service as a voluntary aid detachment nurse in London, Malta and France. And it was made, of course, into a very successful movie starring Alicia Vikander and Kit Harrington quite recently and before that a television series a few years further back with uh, Cheryl Campbell. And the poem is from exactly the same period as the, uh, the events of the film. Uh, Vera Britton had already seen her brother and countless other male friends and relatives head off to the trenches never to return. And the RAL mentioned in, in the dedication to this poem refers to her fiancé, Roland Leighton, because she wrote this poem on receiving news of his death by sniper fire in 1918. It was a particularly arbitrary and senseless death, even in the context of so many other arbitrary and senseless deaths at the time, because he was picked off while he was mending a broken section of wire soon after his company had moved into an area of trenches. And it happened simply because the departing officer had just forgotten to mention that there was a known weakness in a small area which was exposed to enemy snipers. Now, technically, the poem is a deceptively simple composition in the form of a classical threnody or lament, with four line stanzas, each with a simple A-B rhyme scheme. And we were talking the other week about the importance of repetition and how to deliver it as an actor. And it's an essential part of theronotic form in a poem like this because it cre creates a kind of keening, chant-like memorial to the lost love she is addressing. Uh, incidentally, I have a small personal connection to this poem. I included it as part of the recital of First World War poetry and music called Never Such Innocence, which I was touring with the pianist Gamal Kamis uh, last year, and at one of the performances the organisers had invited the British politician Shirley Williams, now Baroness Shirley Williams, still going strong at the age of 88, to be the guest of honour and give an introduction, because Shirley Williams, of course, is the daughter of Vera Britton and the philosopher George Catlin, whom her mother met later on after the war. It was fascinating to hear her talk about her mother, and when we spoke privately about this poem afterwards, she told me it was always very difficult for her father because, much as he and her mother loved one another, he had confided to her, to Shirley, that he always felt he was somehow in competition with the memory of her mother's first love, Roland, this eternally youthful young man whom the poem commemorates, but whom, in truth, Vera had probably only met, unsupervised in the way of those days, a handful of times before his death. And the other thing I remember as I performed the poem, was looking down at Shirley Williams, who was sitting on the front row of the audience just a, a few feet from me, and seeing her eyes fill up with tears. It's one of the more difficult things I've had to do as a performer, and a reminder, I suppose, that for all of us, the responsibility we often have is to bear witness to other people's experience through our work. Perhaps... Some day the sun will shine again, and I shall see that still the skies are blue, and feel once more I do not live in vain, although bereft of you. Perhaps the golden meadows at my feet will make the sunny hours of spring seem gay, and I shall find the white may blossoms sweet, though you have passed away. Perhaps the summer woods will shimmer bright, and crimson roses once again be fair, and autumn harvest fields a rich delight, although you are not there. Perhaps some day I shall not shrink in pain to see the passing of the dying year, 
and listen to Christmas songs again, although you cannot hear. But though kind time may many joys renew, there is one greatest joy I shall not know again, because my heart for loss of you was broken long ago. <laughs>